is there any concern that maybe trying to reach this deadline and get everybody out, uh, mistakes are being made now that there is a report that at least one of the Afghans evacuated to Qatar uh, has suspected ISIS ties? Well, first I would say we have a stringent vetting process which includes uh, background checks before any individual comes to the United States. Uh, so I can't speak to one individual, but I can tell you and, and confirm for you that we take the vetting of any individual who comes to the United States and, and comes out incredibly seriously. Um, and it's an extensive process. Uh, I would say that this is now on track, Peter, to be the largest airlift in U.S. history. Uh, so, and that is a, a bringing American citizens out, it is bringing our Afghan partners out, it is bringing allies out. Uh, so no, I would not say that is uh, anything but a success. Okay, and I know that you said yesterday it's irresponsible to say that Americans are stranded in Afghanistan right now. What do you say to the American citizen in Kabul that uh, Fox spoke to this morning? Her name is, Fa she's going by uh, Fatima. She says, we are stranded at home for four days, three days, we didn't hear anything from anywhere, and they're saying to go to the airport, but we're not being given clear guidance. Our emails are getting ignored. Well, why don't I convey to you exactly what we are doing? And I think what's important to note that I also said yesterday, in the full context of my answer, which I put out today, uh, was that uh, we are committed to bringing Americans home who want to leave, and that is the President's commitment. We are So let me explain to you how our process works. And there have been some very good questions, including from you and from others, about this. Uh, one, as we've said, uh, this is a dynamic number. Uh, we're working hour by hour to refine and make it precise. Understand your desire and interest in having exact number of American citizens on the ground, and the State Department, I expect, will have an exact update on that tomorrow. Just to remind you, the U.S. government does not track our citizens when they travel around the world. We rely on self-reporting, not just in Afghanistan, anywhere in the world. People have to decide to register or not. It's up to them, uh, individuals, whether they decide to register or not, wherever they may be. Uh, and if you register uh, when you're in a country like Afghanistan, you aren't required to deregister. Uh, the State Department also issues alerts. They have publicized phone number and email to contact if you're in it, Afghanistan and want assistance to leave. And for months, the Department has been telling Americans to leave Afghanistan for their own safety. It is our responsibility and our role to work with and help American citizens who want to leave. Let me finish. I'm almost done, and then you can ask a follow-up question. Uh, in recent days, uh, they have reached out to uh, every American citizen registered in Afghanistan directly multiple times. This is a 24-7 operation. Embassies all over the world are supporting phone banking, text banking, and email efforts. If we are not in touch with this individual, give me their contact information and we will get in touch with them. If any of you are hearing from American citizens who can't reach us, give me their contact information and we will get in contact with them. Our estimate of the overall number of American citizens who are there can increase because folks are just now responding to our outreach who may not have registered. Uh, it can also decrease because people leave, they don't tell us they leave, or individuals who may reach out and convey uh, they, they have the documentation needed don't. Uh, so there are a range of factors here, and it's our responsibility to give you accurate information. But That's what our focus is you on. You say no Americans are stranded. This is someone in Kabul who says, who says I am stranded. Uh, so is, is there a better word for somebody who can't leave the house to get to the airport because Jake Sullivan says ISIS is outside the airport? What is, I, I would welcome stranded? you providing their phone number, and we will reach out to them today. And I can answer. assure you of that. The final question. If the Taliban said that staying past the 31st was going to provoke a reaction, and then President Biden decides, okay, we won't stay. Do they have the same kind of influence over military planning as the commander in chief? Well, first of all, Peter, the, tal the Taliban's deadline was May 1st, uh, struck in a deal with the prior administration. The president's timeline was August 31st. That's the timeline he set in a, in a period of time he needed in order to uh, operationalize our departure from Afghanistan. I'd also note that, as I said, as we conveyed in the statement, that our objective and our focus and the focus of the commander in chief is always going to be on the safety and security of the men and women who are serving our country in the military. And that has to be a factor here, and that certainly is a factor for him as he thinks about the timeline.